How you doing guys? Welcome back to NRL Fantasy Analysis. In this one, we're going to be going through all the cheapies for the week. What I would suggest is probably trying to hold off from a bunch of trades this week, just because there hasn't been really many injuries. We've got a few guys coming back, bits and pieces like that. I think it's a really good opportunity, especially if you've used six trades uh, over those first three opportunities. Something like myself, I'm, I'm thinking about holding off on the trades this week, but I wanted to go through all these options for you to make sure and help you make the right decision. So we have Jackson Torpenny here for our first option. He had pretty much the perfect game. He obviously had to come off the bench early for Lockie Lewis, who uh, had a head knock, a really bad one. And he had picked up 46 tackles, two turnover tackles, 57 meters gain, and a kick to fuse. So no demerits at all, and still had a, a, a PPM of, of, what, 0.82 there. So think about him and his opportunity this week. He he will only be getting limited minutes. And we have a look at their bench here, and they've got four forwards on the bench. So we're calling him a forward. He's not an out-and-out -out, you know, hooking option, which is obviously where he played on the weekend. But you'd imagine with Sione Katoa there at number nine that that's where he'll take his minutes. So you know, Katoa had to play 80 minutes last week for, for that reason of Lockie Lewis being injured. But Torpenny should come on to cover sort of 25 to 30 of Katoa's minutes. And... Will that be enough for him to do really well? And obviously, he had no demerits on the weekend. You'd expect a few of them to, to come into the game. But with 30 minutes, is he going to be able to get 25? You know, if he gets 25 for a bunch of weeks, what does that mean for his average? Let's let's put it together for four weeks. If he has that for, for three, for the next three, that's 75 plus 60, 135. So he's sitting at an average of, what, just over 30-odd. Just over um, and is that enough for him to make good money? It's enough for him to make about 100 or so thousand. But... Will that be, in, you know, is that worth the trade in and then worth the trade out? You're not going to be playing him in your side. So he's just there for cash grab only. And at 271k, if he's 228, then you probably think he's a decent option. I, know, I understand a lot of people are trying to get to Cleary, for example, this week and bring in someone like him. You know, looks nice because he has a break in of negative 11. I believe this is one off. Um, but that's just something to think about with him. He's probably only going to get 25 to 30 minutes with a PPM of just under one. Is that going to be enough for him to make some good cash? And I, I don't think so, unless he ends up making his way into a starting side. But they just brought back Thompson and uh, and Jackson as well. You know, obviously, RFM's the only one that's injured. And other than that, they're pretty much full strength. So he has earned his spot in the number 14 jersey after a good game. But that's my thoughts with him at this stage. I wanted to go through Zane Musgrove because I'm having a lot of questions on him. And I feel like I can create a little bit of a good lesson for, for you guys here. Let's have a look at his last like 40 scores. Do we see anything really good here? Ah, oh, first 40. Cool. The rest of it is 20 to 30. Let's look at straight at last year. Played the first two games for, for the Tigers. And you know, him starting last year, everyone was like, yes. Oh well, he's sorry, him playing the first game off the interchange. I was like, yes, we've got to get him. Blah blah blah. He didn't play the next couple of games. He then comes back, oh he picked him as a starter. Yes, let's get him in. 30 minutes, 24 minutes, all right, 31, 34. Look at all these previous games. He's even had 40 to 50 minute games where he just gets low 30s. And for him priced at 295, if he's getting low 30s, he's going to bottom out really quickly. You see what happened with Spencer Lenu? It's probably going to happen with Musgrove. There's also every chance he ends up like what Joe Offengawi was. I don't even know where the Tigers game is. Not sure. Let's have a look at their bench when we get there. All the way down. Here we are. All right, Musgrave as our starter. What happened to Joe Fengiawi? He had an awesome start to the to the year. Then starts again, doesn't go that well, gets punted back to the bench. You know, Musgrove comes in now. He's played a first couple of games. He scored okay, right? Picked up a 45 last week, but after a 25 the week before, what if he just comes out and gets that again? This is a perfect game for him. 32 tackles, 127 metres. He's not going to do that every game, right? He's expecting scores more around the 30 mark, even 25 some games, right? So just think about that when you bring someone like Musgrove in. He could end up like what Offengawi was and, and you start you know, looking to trade him out after a couple of weeks. So that's my thoughts with Musgrove. I just felt like that was a, an interesting lesson to learn with someone like him. We'll talk about Josh King at 318k, so even more expensive here. And you look at his games before the last one, 15 minutes, 24 minutes, 21 minutes. They had a bunch of injuries last week, and that's what gives him the extra minutes. So I wouldn't be thinking about him as an option he has to average like in the mid-30s to 40 to, to do well for you, and I don't think that's going to happen. More in your must-have list, Sam Walker at 254k. Really important player to bring into your side. If you need a, a player like this, get him in. If you don't have him, get him in if you're looking to, to trade up this week. But 
if you already have him, then you got to look at these some of these other options, and they're not as special, unfortunately. But Walker done amazing work. Should get him in. Sean O'Sullivan. A lot of people are trying to bring him in this week. Yeah, done really well. Fifty and a forty-eight. Well done to him. Pretty much identical identical games. A couple extra kick meters. Had a couple of forced dropouts this game. A few less meters gained, but still got the four tackle breaks and only one missed tackle. So really good for him. I think two of they're two really really good games against two good good teams as well. So you, you'll cop that definitely. This week against Manly, you should score pretty well. And then you got the Dragons and then you know Melbourne, which is going to be tough, but then Cowboys and Manly again. So he should score really well over the next bunch of weeks. And if you want to get him in, I think you can. A 6% ownership is still fairly well a point of difference player. But our other one is going to be Josh Schuster, and I think he's really important. Obviously, probably should have got him in one of the last, one of the last three weeks, but he's still a good option in there. Good average around that 40 mark at worst, and then have his upside games around that 50 to 60. So... He's someone that you should be able to get on your side. 25.6% already own him, which is fair enough. Who else we got? Hampton. So if you are needing a center option this week, then he's probably someone you can think about. But he's the last resort. All right. He got 28 at the half. Got 18 tackles, two misses, one error, 100 meters gain, 140 kick meters. So it's really good that he got 100 meters gain. And you see that obviously in his winger games. But when he played 5'8", he's, he's up there, you know, 74 meters, 96, 77, 30. So he likes to run the ball, which, which which is good in this day and age, obviously, to get the tackle breaks and the offloads. Um, but for him, you know, if he's going to average around that 30 mark and he's, you know, covering his center and wing fullback, then, you know, you can handle that. But you, you see what his pass scores are like. There's some scores real low in there off the interchange, obviously. But even when he starts, 20s, 30s, and then a couple of random good games here at fullback and center back in 2018. But if you have to and he's a last resort, then he's the person you have to select at center for your cover. And our last one is going to be Freddy Lussick for our Roosters. And, and it looks like you'll have that spot for the next month or so. So if you're needing someone in the hooker position or you think they, you, know, you need someone that would be able to score okay somewhere in the 30s and get that sort of 60 minutes because that's what it's looked like he, he will get at this stage. But when you make 41 tackles and, and get less than 40 points, it's a little bit of an annoying sign there. But um, if you need someone who's going to make a little bit of cash for you and you know, possibly even as a scorer in your 17 then Lussick will be that option for you. But yeah, as I say, guys, I think best option for this week is to try and hold off on the trades because in the previous weeks you've had, you know, you've had Schuster, you've had Walker, we've also got O'Sullivan. Uh, who else have we had? Obviously, had to start with Little. We had Laurie to start with. All these guys that you, you knew were going to do really well, whereas these guys we're not sure about. And what I've learned over the past few years is that when you select these types of guys that haven't had sort of haven't been talked about a lot in, in, in pre-season. Maybe Torpenny was, has been spoken about a little bit, and that's why he came out and did really well and had that good PPM. But the rest of the guys haven't been spoken about, and and these are the ones that, that tend to come out and do pretty poorly when you know they might have a good game and then fizzle out and not get selected in the squad after a few weeks or just not score as well. So keep in mind that kind of stuff when you are selecting your squad for this week and looking to make trades. You know, m most of us have have traded five or six already, so pretty much max trades, and, and you're going to get found out come uh, the mid part of the season in the buys and then the back end when you don't have any trades left. So think about that when you're making trades this week. If you're enjoying these, please hit like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one, team. Have a good one.